Will you guys come sit in front? Please, thank awesome. you. <laughs> Amazing. Because this involves you, this is going to change your lives, I believe. Awesome. Amazing. So guys, I want to um, share a word before I jump. I'm going to just quickly pray if that's okay. So Father, I thank you for, um, thank you for the body of Christ. We thank you that, that you care so much about all of us, God, that you send Jesus to die for us. And Lord, I pray this morning that, that, that we will just have a fresh revelation of that and a fresh revelation of what Jesus did on the cross and that we can have the Holy Spirit now in our lives changing us and molding us and teaching us and helping us. And so, Lord, I just pray you'll just be with us now. Give us ears to hear you and eyes to see you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I'm, I'm really excited to be sharing today because I, am, I feel God has given me a word um, and a vision for, for you guys, but it's also for the church. I believe this is going to change um, the body of Christ. I believe this is something that's going to change all of us in this place. It's the children, that's the young people, and the adults. So over the past few months, God's been really stirring my heart for, for the children, for you guys. Um, obviously, I spent a lot of time with the, with the young people, doing life with them. But I have been really stirred since starting kids feeling things. Um, just for, for, for you guys and children as well. And so, when I got married a few weeks ago, and we went on honeymoon, and, and a couple of weeks were there, and then we got back from our honeymoon. And, um, and the day I got back, we were um, the, the prayer morning at the Keith's house, the accessory morning, and, um, and God gave me a word as we were praying, and the word was restructure. And I was like, okay, cool, that's amazing, God. I look at that, and um, what, do you want, kind of thing, what do you want to restructure? And then Tiva then, just as kind of God gives me that word, Tiva then starts praying, and he starts praying for the children and the young people, and then he randomly just throws in the word restructure, and I was like, Holy Spirit, you are doing something here. And I am um, quite, I uh, know, I overthink things a lot, so you guys know me, so in my head, I started to kind of go around, okay, God, what do you want to restructure? What do you want to change? What do you want to keep the same? Is it everything? Is it not? I start to kind of go into this mode straight away because God clearly wants to restructure something. But then Anne released a word into the room and this word kind of just filled me with a peace. And the word was that God's already got what you need. You don't need to ask him for it. Just thank him for it. And so since then, I've just been a place in posturing myself in thankfulness to God for, for, for this restructure and what that means and what that looks like. And God's just kind of put stuff in place, like a conversation with Sarah. We had an amazing conversation and, and, and kind of a lot of stuff's been birthed through that. And, um, and God's just breathed all over this, but it's been, it's been kind of stress-free and God's just put stuff in place. So I really believe that this, this vision, this heart, um, is really on God's heart and it's something that he really wants. And it was confirmed even just... The words that we're receiving from, the, from Jacob and Neve two weeks ago in church. And so God's doing something in the lives of our children and young people. And I'd really love to share heart with you this morning and vision. And so I want to just start at the basics um, of, of this before I share the plan and kind of what we're looking at. And so we're going to be looking into, um, into the Holy Spirit. Joel 2, 28 to 29. Um, this is um, written in the Old Testament by the prophet Joel. And it says, and afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. The sons and daughters will prophesy. The old men will dream dreams. The young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. See, God is speaking through the prophet Joel, declaring that he will pour out his spirit on all people. As everybody here. God wants to pour out His Spirit. This is to fall heavily on us. This isn't just a little sprinkling. God wants to pour out His Spirit on us. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Both men and women. See, nobody is left out when God pours out His Spirit. It's exciting. I love this. And this prophecy is fulfilled in Acts 2. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit comes on the church for the first time. And so we're just going to go there. Acts 2, 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. <coughs> all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. 
So the Holy Spirit has come onto the church for the first time, and people are speaking in tongues, and the Holy Spirit is resting on people. But I want to backtrack, because on that very same day, in Acts 1, 15-17, Peter addresses the church in the upper room, and he says to the church that, that the scripture had to be fulfilled, that the Holy Spirit spoke to David long ago. So he's basically saying that the Holy Spirit spoke to David long ago, before Jesus, and it had to be fulfilled, and Jesus fulfilled that. But there's a recognition here that the Holy Spirit moved. The Holy Spirit spoke to David long ago. And the church recognised that the Holy Spirit moves. But then they experienced it later that day for themselves. And I really believe that God wants to take us, you guys, the children, the young people, out of recognising that the Spirit moves and actually into a place of experiencing it ourselves. See, God declares that he will pour out his Spirit on all people. Guys, this isn't a spectator sport. He wants to pour out his spirit on us all. And this is our vision for the young people and the children in our church. That they don't just simply recognise the Holy Spirit moving in us adults. That they actually experience that for themselves. I really believe and we really believe God wants to pour out his spirit on them just as much as us. And he wants them to discover their giftings. To, to grow in character and the fruits of the spirit. To grow in sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. And start to reflect a life that Jesus lives and lived. And that can only come through communion with God and walking close with God and having His Holy Spirit living inside of us and walking in the power of that. Matthew 19, 14 says that not to hinder the children coming to Jesus for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. This is what we want to see. We want to see the children walk into the fullness of all God has got for them and the young people. Guys, you are not just the future generation. You're the now generation. And God wants to move in you now. He's got things he wants to speak through into your school, into your friendship groups, into your teachers' lives, into your home. God wants to move when you're walking down the street and you just see a stranger. He wants to speak through all of you. And this is exciting. Don't talk to strangers. No, yeah, sorry. Yeah, don't, don't just talk to strangers. Take an adult with you. But still, go where the Spirit leads. I'm not, I'm not, it's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but um, lost <laughs> the trap. So, guys, <laughs> I love this. I'm excited by this because I know it's not just my vision, but this is God's vision for our children. Because He wants to pour out His Spirit on all people. And I, I've kind of got more to bring, but I am um, before I go anywhere else right now. I want to give Jesus the glory because this is only possible through Jesus. And so, Hebrews 10, 19 to 22. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having a heart sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed pure water. Jesus' death and resurrection doesn't just mean eternal life. John 10.10 10 tells us that, that Jesus came so that we may have life and have it with, with fullness, life with more, with more abundantly. And this abundant life is a life lived close to the Father. I won't go into too much detail on this, but before Jesus before Jesus died and rose again, the, the, only the priest could enter into the most holy, holy places, God's presence. And that was in the temple once a year on the Day of Atonement. The keys will know more about that. <laughs> um, and, and he would do that to offer sacrifices for everybody's sins. But when Jesus died and rose again, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. And now we can walk in God's presence. And actually... In 1 Corinthians 3.16, it tells us that we are now the temple of the Holy Spirit and he dwells in our midst. And this is all because of Jesus. We can walk with the Holy Spirit in communion with God because of Jesus. John 14.16-17, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit is truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be, with, will be in you. The Holy Spirit lives with us and in us. You guys got that? 
Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in us and with us. John 16, 7. But very truly I tell you, it is good. It is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Jesus had to go and leave the earth so that he could ask the Father for the Holy Spirit to come and be our helper, to be our teacher, to walk with us, to show us God's plans and God's path for our life. So accepting Jesus into our life isn't just accepting that we have eternity in heaven, it's accepting that, that God wants to give us an abundant life now. See, Tiva and Charles have been preaching about living with, with an eternal perspective. And I believe this is what it's about. Being guided by the Holy Spirit. It will help you walk building up treasures in heaven and not treasures on earth where moth and vermin can destroy Matthew 6, 19 to 20. So it's because of Jesus that we have the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we need to accept this gift, this promise that, that God speaks over our lives. And this is how we live an abundant life. Guys, if you want to live an abundant life, you have to live close to the Father and accept the Holy Spirit. And he will guide you in every step that you take. So we recognize that God wants to pour out his Spirit on all people. That's everybody and it's all because of Jesus. There's so much meat that I could sit on and, and we, could, we could sit in this for, for a while, but I really believe that, that for now I just want to share with the, the vision, the plans we've got for the children and youth work here on a Sunday morning. And so I really hope this speaks to us all about how the Holy Spirit wants to move in our lives and work in us and change our lives so we can live more abundantly and with an eternal perspective. So, I missed that. Cool, supercharged. I um, I was praying for um for you guys and, and for this as well. Just thanking God for what the what He wants to do in regards to this restructuring. And as I was praying, God gave me the word supercharged. And this <coughs> means to have extra power. Okay. Extra power or energy. And I really believe that God wants to pour out His Holy Spirit on the children and young people in this place giving them extra power and energy to move and walk in all that God has got for them to live a life that reflects the life of Jesus. And so this is the name that I've kind of felt God has put on my heart for you guys, for Sunday groups, from when we begin this vision, if God continues to do that. And so, on the screen, you see my beautiful, little, colourful creation. Um, this is kind of our monthly plan. We're looking at launching this in September potentially, so we're not going to rush into this. There's a lot of meat that's got to be put on the bone, so it's not something we're rushing into. Um, so Sunday schools will carry on um, with Azella's amazing um, kind of vision and plan for now. But this is what we're looking at doing. Week number one is faith, hope and love. Week number two will be lived by the Spirit. Week number three of the month will be the gift giver. And week number four, the body of Christ. And then on a five-week month, they'll either be in the service, ministering to us, hopefully, and then um, or we'll have worship and ministry time with them. And we're going to go into each one of these in a moment, but I just want to share that when I grew up, when I was your age, when I was um, youth, young, a young person in church in Newquay, my youth pastor was amazing, Matt Timms, and I had Liz Holleran as well, who, who came alongside me, and also Tiva and Pete as well. I journeyed with, with people who wanted to do life with me, who wanted to see me flourish and grow, who wanted to see me discover my giftings, grow in my character, to live with sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. People who wanted to encourage me, but most of all, these people wanted to help me keep the main thing, the main thing, and that is love. Loving the Father and loving one another. This is what Jesus wants us to do. And that's what we want to instill in our children and young people. You can have all these things, but week number one is faith, hope, and love. That is the first thing we're going to focus on today. Faith, hope, and love. 1 Corinthians 13, 1-3 says, If I speak in tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanking cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Paul is setting things right in the church here. He doesn't want the church to get this wrong. 
He is saying that, 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 that without love we are nothing. And I love how he says this. Because he's not saying that without love the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's power is nothing. He's saying that we are nothing without love. God still remains the same. This is about us. We've got to get our hearts right, posture ourselves right before God. Jesus is quite clear about love when he says that, you, that, that our two greatest commandments in Matthew 22 are to love him first and then love others. And I believe Paul's addressing pride here. People who seek after the gifts, people who seek after things for their own gain, to, to, to edify themselves and not glorify God. And we have to humble ourselves. We have to come before God. James 4.10 tells us to humble ourselves before the Lord and he will lift us up. Humbling ourselves is coming before God, recognizing that we are weak and He is strong. We can't do anything without God and without His power. We need Him. Humble ourselves before the Lord. Guys, I think this is something we can all struggle with is pride in our lives. No one can escape this. Unless you live close to the Father and keep on humbling yourself. This is, this is something you've got to do daily. Daily humble ourselves before the Lord. 1 John 4, 8 says, Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. So if you're here today and you say, oh, I'm a Christian, I follow God, but then you don't love, how can you know God? Because God is love. It's quite clear here. You have to love. And I think this is something that, again, it comes from growing close to the Father. It comes from spending time with Him. Because when you spend time with God, who is love, you, you start to love more, recognize that He loves you, and you see His love for others. It's really important that we spend time with God in a secret place, humbling ourselves before Him, and just getting to know His character, the God who is love. Verse 13 of, 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 of the scripture says now these three things remain faith, hope and love but the greatest of these is love and this is what we want to instill in our children and young people mm. that they search for the father who is love more than anything else in the world this is week one of potentially where I feel God wants us to go focusing on the main thing and that is the father who is love, faith, hope and love I'm going through these quite quickly because time is not on my side right now. But week number two is live by the Spirit. So we're going to be looking at the fruits of the Spirit. Sorry guys. Galatians 5, 13 to 26. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather serve one of the humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbour as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of your flesh. For flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit. And the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other. So that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Church, we are called to be free. God has given us freedom. He's given us a choice. The choice is quite simple, flesh or the spirit. They're contrary to one another. You can't choose one. You can't have one and have the other. They're contrary. You either choose your flesh and follow after your flesh or you follow after God and the spirit. And I love this because God isn't a God who says, just don't indulge in the flesh because I want loads of followers. I want everyone to follow me. God doesn't just say that for that reason. Yes, God is a jealous God. He wants our attention and our affection. But God also knows the consequences when you follow after the flesh. It says in Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's keep on reading. I just wanted to stop there and say that. Um, Galatians 5. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Not in the right place, come on. There we go. The acts of the flesh are obvious sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, adultery and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, fractions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. 
But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let's keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Paul lists here the acts of the flesh and then the fruits of the Spirit. And he makes a comparison between the two in a way. He's saying, look, you've got the acts of the flesh, that's doing something. That is an action. The fruits of the Spirit are the result of something. There's a difference in these things. See, the Holy Spirit brings fruit. He brings results. There's value in that. Was the flesh bears no fruit. It's purely an action. The acts of the flesh destroy our character, whilst the Holy Spirit, with the fruits of the Spirit, build up our character. We have love, we have joy, we have peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So if you've given your life to Christ today, then you belong to Christ Jesus and, and you've made a decision to crucify yourself as passions and your, your desires and, and live by the Spirit. Keeping in step with the Spirit. And this is how we grow in character. This is a journey that, 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 that God wants to take us on through the Holy Spirit. Choosing to, to go after the Spirit and not the flesh. And this is what we want to just to, just to invest in our young people here. Helping them live for Christ and not live for their flesh. Helping them to bear fruit and, and grow in character. Developing themselves and who they are in Christ. Following God and not their flesh. Week number three is the gift giver. About the gifts of the Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12. And here Paul is writing to the, to the church in Corinth, informing them that, about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. See, he doesn't want them to be uninformed. And we don't want our children and young people to be uninformed. We want to teach them this stuff and show them that the Holy Spirit wants to give them gifts yeah. and wants to pour this stuff out over their lives because he wants to pour out his Spirit on all people, including our children and young people. Yeah. So this same Spirit here wants to do this in our children and young people's lives and all of our lives. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 to 3. Perhaps going to read to verse 11. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to meet idols. Therefore I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit. Just a side note here that we, we can know when the Holy Spirit is at work because the Holy Spirit will always glorify Jesus. See, no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And so it's obvious that, that when the Holy Spirit is working, He will always glorify Jesus. Just keep going. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them, and in every one, it's the same God at work. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by the means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between Spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And still, another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit. And he distributes them to each one just as he determines. The Holy Spirit is the gift giver. He gives us gifts to, 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 to edify the church, to build up the church, but also for others outside of the church to see them grow and come into salvation. And I couldn't help but notice here that, that Paul makes the point and he labours the point that, that all of these gifts are work of the same Spirit. So he's making the point that God is the same God and he gives these gifts. They might be different gifts, but it all points back to God. So the Holy Spirit brings Unity within the church. Yeah. Nobody's gift here is greater than another. This isn't a spectator sport, and I really believe that our children are in a season where they're going to discover their giftings. The Holy Spirit wants to give them and pour out giftings over their lives. And church, I'm excited by this. We're already seeing it. We're already seeing it. In fact, Neve, you, you, can you come up a second? Neve. Um, I felt God really laid on my heart that Neve had a word for today and this morning she came up to me and, um, and she, she told me that she's got a word so I'm going to just give this a microphone to her. Um, the second 
So Matt was thinking about the word of the Holy Spirit, how it could reach everybody. And um, I had an idea, well, from God. And um, it was like, he's like a phone. He, so a phone can reach anybody. And the Holy Spirit can reach anybody. So he can, he's signaling, signaling everybody. And uh, um, when I was sitting next to Maya, um, I, I thought that God was giving me something else. Um, like it's not, it's not only for one of you, it can also say if you were um, speaking to God, I could also speak to God. He could, he can speak, listen to each one of you. So God is already doing amazing things in the lives of my children. I love it, it's so good. It's so good. The Holy Spirit is like a phone. He can speak to all of us. He wants to speak to all of us. And it's up to us whether we pick that phone up or not. He's not going to force himself on us. And I believe this is going to look different for everybody. Like I say, and each child has got the spirit will distribute as he wants to distribute. But we want to teach them, make sure they're aware, not uninformed, that the Holy Spirit wants to do this stuff. We want to teach them how to, to communicate with God, how to receive from the Spirit. And I'm going to be learning on this too. Like, this is going to be a massive learning curve for us all as a church, I believe. And so that will be week three of the month, focusing on the gifts of the Spirit and helping our children and young people develop in that area, and grow in that area, discovering their giftings. Week number four is the body of Christ. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. <laughs> is that me? Yeah. Wow, that was awesome. <laughs> Do that again. Can you hear me? Am I back on? Yeah. There we go, I'm here. So 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. This is Paul's letter to the, to the Corinthians. He's letting the church know again the importance of unity. And this is something, like we said, the Holy Spirit brings anyway. That's his character. It's all about unity. And Paul is writing here and letting everybody know that, that you're all part of the body. And the body has many parts. Everybody's got something to bring and everyone's a part of the body. He says that the head can't say to the foot that I don't need you. And so nobody here can sit and say, we don't need the person next to you because they've got gifts which you can't bring the, that they need, they're specific for the body. And God wants to use everybody. He is stating the importance of everybody here. Everybody in the bride, everybody in the body of Christ, every gifting is important for the body. So whatever God has placed you here today, whether it's cleaning, whether it's coffees, whether it's worship meeting, whether it's playing drums, whether it's whether it's preaching, whatever that is, your gift is equal, has equal importance to everybody's gift, to Tima's gift. Every gift has equal importance because the same Spirit distributes those gifts. It all comes back to God. He wants to use you there in the body. And the body can't fully function without you. Because if, say, the ankle is, has been hurt from the past and it's, it's, it's swollen because you've had an injury, the body's not fully functioning as it should and it could. And this is why it's so important to keep ourselves close to the Father. Because our journey affects the whole body. If I'm the ankle, yet I'm wandering in a different direction because I want to go my own way. Actually, that doesn't help the body. We're in this together, guys. We need to have unity. And the young people and the children are a part of that. They've got gifts that God wants to distribute to them for them to build up the church and use within the body of Christ. We've all got a role to play here. So this is what we want to see. We want to see our children and young people discover their place within the body to exercise those gifts, like I said, to build up the church but also to build up non-believers in their school, to speak stuff into their lives, to see their friends come to know God, to see people who aren't their friends come to know God, to see everybody in their life come to know God. These guys will live a life and are living a life reflecting the life of Jesus. And guys, I just want to say, and I know I'm running out of time, but you guys aren't here because your parents brought you here. I believe you are here because God wants you here and he wants to do something incredible in your life this morning and in the future.
So this is supercharged. These are my about our plans and our thoughts. Um, and I'm really excited about this new territory that we're potentially walking into as a church. Like I say, this can change, it can mold. The meat's not on the bones yet. So I'm not sure what the sessions might look like. God might want to do something completely different. And if he does, he still releases words, I believe, this morning, which are, which are seeds in people's hearts. But all of us need to put love first. Loving the Father, then loving each other and people around us in our community. Everybody we see, loving everybody, even what people would call the unlovable, just loving on everybody. This is who Jesus was. This is who God is. God is love. We need to, to let the Holy Spirit develop our character, growing within the fruits of the Spirit, choosing the Spirit over the flesh. We need to all discover our gift things. What does God have to give us within the body to edify the church and to build up others outside the church? We all need to learn how to exercise that within the body. Know where God has put us within the body and, and, and function fully in that role with close to the Father. And I believe this is totally on God's heart. I'm excited by this. God wants to see everybody sold out for Him, refined in character, discovering their giftings, and then using that within the body. This is unity within the body. And our children and young people are 100% a part of that, which gets me so excited. And I'm going to finish here on this note that I want to encourage this church to be praying over the next few weeks and months as we kind of plan for this and see what this looks like. So praying for us as, as leaders and how this looks. Praying for leaders to rise up and step up to run these sessions and to, with people who have a heart for our children and young people. But I also want us to, as a church, to, how do I word this? Come alongside our young people more. When they run past you in the building, grab one and get to know them. Get to, get to just, consider, don't, oh my goodness, I'm saying this. I'm being serious, you can go and think what you think there. But I, I'm being serious, guys, our children will run around the place and it's amazing to see, but let's get to know who they are. Let's do life with them, let's journey through stuff with them, with their parents come in. And then, <laughs> it's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't have any safeguard issues here. But, church, let's get to know our children and young people. Let's start to do life with them. Let's be praying for them in the room. Let's, let's, let's give them opportunity to release them into their giftings. This is exciting territory we're walking into, and we're doing it together. This is going to change all of our lives, going to change the adults' lives, just as much as the children and young people. God wants to pour out His Spirit on all people, and that's everybody in this place. <coughs> so, that is... Near shared heart, and I want to do something really quickly before we close. This is the this is what you call the appeal. Now I'm about the worship band back up, but I am. Um, can I get all the children to stand up and the young people? Is that okay?